Thanks, Christoph. Uh, thanks, everybody, for waking up after the ROM session. Uh, so I'm going to talk about cryptography with updates, with, which is work with Prabhanjan Ananth and Abhishek Jain. So let's start by talking about garbled circuits. In a typical setting for garbled circuits, there's two parties. Alice is on the left, and she has some circuit C that she wants Bob to be able to compute on an input X. So Alice is going to, before she knows the input X, she's going to garble the circuit and send it over to Bob. Um, and then, and this, this operation can take time, um, this operation can take time uh, proportional to the size of the circuit. And then later she's going to get the input uh, X and she wants to quickly send that over to Bob, garbled, so that Bob can learn C of X and nothing else. So for example, C might capture Alice's knowledge or beliefs about the value of Apple stock. So tonight, Alice is going to garble this circuit that captures this belief and send it over to Bob. And tomorrow morning, uh, depending on X is like the stock price or something, and C of X will be buy or sell. So this is well and good, but maybe tonight Alice is going to learn something about Apple. You know, something that changes her valuation of Apple stock. You know, she sees a really cool picture of an iPhone. Um, they got left at a bar, um, and sh now she wants to update her circuit. You know, she updates her belief. She wants to make some small change to the circuit C and make it C prime. If Alice wants to do this, so she can just garble the circuit C prime from scratch, is there anything better that she can do? So in particular, if Alice just wants to change one circuit, one gate of the circuit C, can she do any better than garbling the whole circuit from scratch, or is it hopeless? Does she have to spend time proportional to C? Or instead, maybe, maybe there's some small thing, this purple thing, that Alice can send to Bob, that Bob can combine with the garbled circuit C to get the garbled circuit C prime, but that computing this purple thing would be um, easy, much easier than garbling the circuit uh, from scratch. We call, we're going to call this thing an updatable garbled circuit. So this is a very natural question, and it immediately raises a, a bunch of other natural questions. So we can think about the same question not only in garbled circuits, but in obfuscation. If I, need, if I obfuscate a circuit C, and then I want to obfuscate a circuit with one gate change, do I have to obfuscate all over again? Do I have to spend time proportional to C? Or is there some way I can leverage the work I've already done? Or in the setting of attribute-based encryption, if I've already generated a secret key for some policy, uh, do I have to generate a, a, a whole new secret key if I want to change just one gate in the policy? Or for non-interactive proofs, you know, NISX or witness indistinguishable proofs, uh, if I want to, if I've already proved some some NP statement to you, do I have to take time? Do I have to do it all over if I want to change a very small piece of the statement? And this problem has been studied uh, only in the set. In this problem as this problem has only received sort of limited attention, mainly in the setting of obfuscation. Prabhanjan is going to talk about some of that work tomorrow, later today, later today. Um, but but basically, these, these types of questions haven't really been studied before. Uh, in this work, we construct, we show how to do uh, updatable garbled circuits which will allow you to change uh, any gate of the circuit that you want, uh, only spending time sort of proportional to the number of gates you're going to change. And we can build this from lattice assumptions, like uh, le learning with errors. And moreover, we, we study a, another notion, which is a little confusingly named, uh, these two maybe, uh, which we're going to call updatable randomized encodings. The distinction will become clear. Is there a mouse on the screen? Sorry. I see a mouse. Okay. Um, and we can, we can do updatable randomized encodings for an even larger class of updates uh, from functional encryption. And if you, <coughs> if you only want to update uh, 100 times instead of unboundedly many times, we'll talk about what that means in a second, uh, we can do it from one-way functions. Um, and lastly, we show that updatable randomized encodings are going to suffice for all the applications on the left. That, so for example, given attribute-based encryption, and, and updatable randomized encodings, you can get an updatable attribute-based encryption. So I'm going to start by defining updatable randomized encodings, telling you about uh, what related work there is, and then show you how to do this, this transformation, just sort of by example. 
And then we're going to go back to, if we have time, Christoph is looking at his watch, we're going to go back to updatable garbled circuits at the end and see how to construct them from, uh, from lattices. So updatable randomized encoding. So what does it mean for a circuit to be updatable? What's an updatable circuit? So your intuition is the right thing. It's a little annoying to formalize, so I'm not going to do it formally. But if you have a circuit and an input, we're going to think for randomized encodings, we'll think of circuits and inputs together, as is typically done. Um, so if you have a circuit and input, C and X, and some update U, this update could be change a gate of the circuit, change a bit of X. Um, and you can, in, there's some way to apply this to the C and X to get a new C prime X prime. Um, and we can really do a, sort of a large class of updates. Anything that the, the application, the, the plus sign, can be sort of computed by a circuit of a fixed size. So whatever your representation is, as long as that's true. Um, but think of like changing a gate or changing a bit of the underlying representation. OK, so what's a randomized encoding? Randomized encoding is a way to encode a circuit at an input. So into this green box, CX over there. Where encoding takes, uh, takes is not too much time. It's easier to do the encoding than to compute the circuit. Um, but, but this encoding still only reveals the value C of x and nothing more. <coughs> so we want to also find a way to encode the update. This is sort of the, the main idea. We want to encode the update into this purple box on the right so that there's a way to combine the original randomized encoding and the encoded update to get a new randomized encoding for C prime, X prime, okay? And the sort of the correctness, the thing that we want to hold is that doing it that way, if you go, if you use the up encoded update to update the encoding, then you get the same thing as if you, you get a randomized encoding of C prime, X prime, where C prime, X prime, or what you would have gotten if you just did the update on the left in the clear. Make sense? So it's easy to sort of see why multiple updates now make sense. We're going to think about mul multiple updates in serial. So if I have C and X, I apply update U1 to get CX1, and then I update U2. I want to be able to do that in the encoding world, too. So I, wanna, I, I can give you the randomized encoding of C and X, then the encoding of the first update, and then the encoding of the second update, and you should be able to do the thing that you want to do. Um, and each of the green boxes is a randomized encoding. So you can decode each of the green boxes and get the value C of X, C1 of X1, C1 of X, C2 of X2. And going back just for a second to updatable garbled circuits, um, updatable garbled circuits is going to correspond to like a single use variant of this where you can just decode the last value. And at the end, uh, I'll show you this picture for updatable garbled circuits and it'll be clear before we do the construction. So the key challenge in all this is efficiency. If we didn't care about efficiency, Alice could just do the randomized encoding of C prime X prime fresh, right? The only thing that is the only it's only interesting if we have efficiency. So what we what we want to capture is that if we don't change too much, the size of the encoding, the size of the encoded update is not too large. And so we want the encoded update, the thing in the purple, to grow with the size of the update and with uh, k the security parameter. But I'm basically not going to mention k ever again. Um, and <coughs> for some of the applications of randomized encoding to build, to build uh, the other updatable primitives, we'll also need something stronger. If we're considering circuits that have not just a, a Boolean output but a longer output, we'll also need the, um, the, up the encoded update size or t the time to generate the encoded update to not depend on the output length of these circuits if we have many bit outputs. And we're going to call this output compactness. This is sort of in parallel to a concept in functional encryption literature. <coughs> the sim security can be defined in two natural ways. Simulation security would say, says that um, if you have all the values of all the, of all the evaluations, then you can simulate the view of the original encoding and all the updates. And indistinguishability um, is that if, you, if a sequence of evaluations agree then the, encode, the original encoding is in the sequence of updates will be indistinguishable. And sort of similar to the functional encryption literature, compactness is impossible in the simulation setting. <coughs> and there's a generic transformation from an indistinguishable scheme with compactness to a simulation scheme without compactness. And this is pretty parallel to the to results in functional encryption literature. 
Okay, so now on to uh, some previous work. So some of you maybe are thinking about incremental cryptography. This sounds a lot like incremental cryptography, maybe. Um, so incremental cryptography is like a line of work. It was uh, started by Bilara Goldwasser and Goldreich. Thing, this is sort of a typical setting of incremental cryptography. The, you have a signer that has a secret key and he signs a message and then he makes a small change to the message and he wants to sign it again without sort of signing from scratch. He wants to do something faster. So this picture looks a lot like our picture. <coughs> so what's the difference? <coughs> the difference is that on the left, in incremental cryptography, there's only one party. There's only one party. And the party is doing everything in his head. So he knows the secrets. And there's no, he doesn't have to communicate anything with anybody. He, has, he outputs one signature and then he outputs the next signature. On the right, in our setting, <coughs> there's an authority and there's a user. The authority knows the secrets, like the randomness for the garbling. But the user is the one who, who is eventually going to apply the update. Because the authority doesn't even want to output the, the new garbled sort yet. So the authority has to encode this update in some way and send it to the user. So this, uh, our setting uh, requires some sort of stronger security because, um, because the user gets to see more. On the left, you only see the two signatures. On the right, you see the two, garble you see the two randomized encodings of the two garbled circuits, plus this encoded update that lets you transform the from one to the other. But we do somewhat relax efficiency in that the whole process of going, of get going from sigma to sigma prime here um, is fast, whereas in our setting, the only thing we require is that this arrow, which you can't see that pointer, this arrow here of generating the encoded update is fast. Um, we're sort of relaxed about how, how long the user, we're, we're willing to make the user um, take. And in particular, the user is going to take, in our constructions, the user is going to take time proportional to C to do this computation. Um, <clears throat> now on to the, the obfuscation work. So there's these two works about incremental and patchable obfuscation. Um, and so both of these works sort of model things slightly differently, uh, whether uh, the type of updates um, and the types of constructions they get. But I think both of these two works are interesting, and I recommend them, in particular because the first work by uh, Gargan Pandey has this cool lower bound, um, which is sort of something, nothing like we have cool lower bound on how efficient you can make these things. And the patch of obfuscation, which Prabhanjan is going to talk about today, I guess I was wrong, um, where they uh, can do one update lets you update many obfuscated circuits. So that's very cool. Um, but this is sort of the main related work. Um, and lastly, we think about updating in, in sort of a serial way. If you can also easily imagine updating in parallel. And parallel uh, updatable randomized encoding closely corresponds to reusable garbled circuits, uh, which have been considered before. OK, so on to applications. So this is a, sort of a meta statement, which is not a formal statement. Uh, give me x, y, z, and updatable randomized encodings, and I'll give you an updatable x, y, z. Um, so this is, this is not true as stated. It's not formal enough. But we can formalize it for some large class of x, y, z. Which is a, including attribute-based encryption, functional encryption, obfuscation, uh, NIWIs, garbled circuits. Um, okay, so updatable randomized encodings are sort of like enable everything to become updatable. So here's sort of the simplest possible application of it. So this is the one I'm going to show you. So let's say I have an uh, indistinguishability obfuscator and I want to make an updatable indistinguishability obfuscator. So the new obfuscation algorithm is going to take a circuit and it's going to update. It's going to output an updatable randomized encoding of the obfuscation circuit, the circuit that computes the obfuscation, um, and the circuit that I want to obfuscate as input. Right. Now to encode an update, I just encode the update, where the update is now going to apply to this input. This is the like. This is the X that we saw before, and then and then we, with this and this, the user can can get the updatable randomized encoding of IO and C prime, right? Uh, this thing can be decoded, then you get the obfuscation of C prime and you're done. So correctness and uh, security are inherited from the correctness and the security of the updatable randomized encoding and the obfuscation. 
And in this case, efficiency requires compactness because the circuit in question here is really the obfuscation. Um, and this thing outputs many bits, um, so it requires compactness. But for example, uh, maybe non-interactive witness indistinguishable proofs doesn't require compactness, and correspondingly, we'll be able to get simulation security. OK, so I don't know how much time I have, but not quite conclusions before we go to the construction and potentially run out of time. <coughs> is that updatable crypto is sort of a meta question that you can think about in lots of contexts. And it's largely unexplored, except for this work and the obfuscation work. Um, and I think we're not necessarily settled on the right modeling or the right set of definitions. And in our work, we sort of show that updatable randomized encodings is this huge hammer, but it also requires functional encryption. And in fact, functional encryption I didn't mention, I should have is also necessary, sort of, if you have a compact, updatable randomized encoding, you can get a functional encryption of the type that we need. Um, but we also see that for garbled circuits, we can do something from lattices. Um, so thinking about direct constructions for individual primitives, the ones that you're interested in, um, we could do something much better, potentially, than what we do. Um, and also, sort of the new types of questions, like the obfuscation works, present lower bounds, updating many things at the same time. Um, it's largely unexplored. And now with the four minutes I have, I'm going to try to tell you uh, a construction of updatable garbled circuits from lattices. Uh, okay, so here's the picture I promised. Here's the updatable garbled circuits. So now I'm going to change notation to go back to sort of the notation of garbled circuits where I separate the circuit and the input. So I want to garble the circuit, get this green thing on the right, and then garble the update which will allow me to take the garbled circuit C to get a garbled circuit C prime. And at the end, the authority is going to garble the input X. And this input is going to allow you to decode C prime of X, but not, but not C of X. You only get, w it's a one-shot evaluation. You only get the evaluation at the end. And you need this last thing from the, from the authority. That's the picture. So let's start just with garbled circuits. So Yao's garbled circuit construction, you take a circuit, and for every gate you do, you make this garbled gate on the right, right? Each gate has a, a thing on the right. Um, those are the garbled gates. So let's just, let's just try to do it. Let's just try to update, right? So now let's say I change this, that, a, that OR gate to an AND gate. So to generate the update, I'm just going to, I have all the secrets. Um, the authority has all the secrets. So just recompute this garbled table, this garbled gate on the right. Okay. So certainly you can apply the update. You can take out the one gate and put in the new gate. And this is all well and good. You certainly get efficiency. I change one gate. I generate one garbled gate. I get correctness. You can evaluate the new circuit. But I don't get security because you can still evaluate the original garbled circuit. And maybe you can just break the whole thing and learn, learn the circuit. So now I want to fix security. So how am I going to do it? I don't know how to do many things, but I know how to encrypt. So I'm going to encrypt every garbled gate. And uh, it's a little confusing. I don't mean that the garbled gate has a lot of encryptions inside of it. It does. But I'm going to generate the garbled gate and then encrypt the whole thing with a new symmetric key encryption scheme, fresh keys for every gate. Okay, This is still an attempt. This won't be the final answer. Um, and then at the end, I'm going to give you the new garbled gate. And then I'm going to give you one key for every gate that I didn't update, which will allow you to open those encryptions. So this is great. It's correct still. It's secure. But now I don't have efficiency anymore, right? Because I gave you one key for every gate I didn't update. And I gave you a gate for every gate I updated. So I gave you uh, something as big as the circuit. <coughs> OK, so now how do we do better? Let's use a punctured encryption scheme. So this is sort of inspired by puncturing techniques. So I'm going to encrypt all the gates with the same key instead of different keys every time. And when I update a gate, I'm going to give you the decryption key punctured on the gate I updated. So what does it mean for a key to be punctured? It means it can decrypt all the ciphertext that I want it to decrypt, except for the one, except for the one I updated. And the size of this, of this key is not, is not big. It doesn't grow with the size of the circuit. 
And since I'm in the symmetric key setting, this can be constructed from just puncturable pseudorandom functions, which can be constructed from one-way function, just the GGM PRF. We'll let you do this. <coughs> so this gets me everything I want, except I can only update once. You know, once I remove all the encryptions, I'm done. I can't go further. So the last idea to get many updates is to use symmetric proxy re-encryption, okay? So what is, what is proxy re-encryption do? It says that if I want to transform ciphertext, if I want to let you transform ciphertext from the blue to the red key, there's some blue red key I can generate which will let you compute the transformation. A punctured proxy re-encryption scheme uh, it sort of does the same thing, but I can puncture the re-encryption key. So this blue-red key will only let you transform all the ciphertext except for the one I don't want you to transform. So in the example, I, it's punctured at two, I can transform one and three. And then the next key is punctured at one, I can only transform three. And security, is, security uh, holds if I give you the, these two punctured keys and the green key at the end, which will let, me which will let you decrypt the green ciphertext. So even given all these keys, one and two should be hidden. This is the security property I'm going to need. And such a, such a punctured proxy re-encryption scheme can be built from chemomorphic constrained PRFs. So symmetric re-encryption can be built from chemomorphic PRFs. To get punctured uh, re-encryption, you can do it from constrained chemomorphic PRFs. The construction looks a lot like a, the constru a construction in uh, work of Christoph, my esteemed chair of the session. Um, but this, we need a stronger security property than they prove. So I'm out of time. So what am I going to do? I'm going to encrypt the circuit gate by gate just like I did before. And at every step, I'm going to give you the updated, uh, the, sorry, the updated gate encrypted under the new key and the re-encryption key that will let you transform all of the ciphertext from one key to the next. And then you can continue, continue. And at the end, with the garbled input, I'm going to send you the last key, which will allow you to decrypt everything and evaluate. You get efficiency, you get correctness, you get security. Um, and that's it. That's the story. Thanks. Okay. Thanks a lot for this uh, yeah. very nice talk. So we have time for one or two short questions while the next speaker sets up. Any questions? So maybe let me ask one. So what would be like a kill application for? So for, so for any of those. So updated. for updatable garbled circuits, is this still, yeah, so for updatable garbled circuits, I think there's not yet a killer application. I think it's just a supernatural question. It's not clear how to answer when you ask it. For updatable randomized encodings, you get all the, you get all the applications on the left. And if we're thinking about updatable anything, updatable X, Y, Z, I don't know, pick your favorite application, make it updatable. So I just think that for example, up, not having to re-obfuscate if you change one gate, it's a, it's a natural property to want to require from an obfuscation scheme. But.